Good afternoon, welcome to this webinar. My name is Jonathan Graham, WA Manager for Datamine, and I'm gonna be going through the new features of Studio OP version 2.2, which was released last week. The format of the presentation is that I'm gonna give a few slides and a, a demonstration of some of the new features, and then my colleague Lee Poulin in the Brisbane office is gonna be answering any questions at the end. So firstly, a quick overview. Datamine Studio OP is a complete design and scheduling package for medium and short-term planning of open pit mines. We can design and visualize pits, pushbacks, benches, dumps, and stop piles, create mining units and evaluate against block model to generate reserves, schedule the mining units to generate short to medium term mine plans, and use automated scheduling using new optimization capability that we've introduced. But the focus of this presentation is what is new in version 2.2. First change is a simple one. We've added a new ribbon, which is the project setup and moved some of the buttons out of the reserves ribbon. And just to demonstrate how to now set up a project. So in this project, I've currently got a block model and a topography. The block model's got three phases. And what I'm gonna do is go to setup, manage our pits, and this opens the task window. And I've only got one pit, and then I click on surface topography and I add the topography and then associate that with the pit. Then I'm gonna add the block model. And in this area here, it reads all of the attributes of the model and these are what will be reported on. And then I can associate the model with the pit. I have an option to validate the block model. And this shows all of the absent and negative values for the attributes. And we have the option to fix the absence to uh, reset them to zero if we want to click on this fix button here. But these are fine for this demonstration. So the next thing is to define phases. And in this model, we had actually got three phases. So if I click on use model and then initialize, it will come up with three phases. But of course, I can manually add phases if I want to. But I'm gonna use them from the model. And then finally, I'm gonna define the benches. And we've got three options for defining benches. We can take the elevations from the block model, we can use a string file, or we can manually add our bench elevations. But I'm gonna add mine from the planning model. And it just reads the planning model, and my bench heights are a standard 10 meters, which is the block height, and then save. And then that is now the project setup complete. Okay, the next major new feature are the auto design tools in Studio OP. The auto design tools are a dynamic rules-based approach where the rules are dynamically learned and saved as you interactively model the pit. The rules are comprised of bench definitions, rosettes and slope regions, and defining variable berms and face angles, constraint design strings, which we can have on different benches, road start points, gradients and directions, and road switchback locations. So delving into another demonstration, going to design the phase one of this pit that we've just set up. And the first task is to define the slopes. We've got three options to defining slopes. We can manually set them up and have a default face angle, berm width and uh, catch berm. Additionally, we can set up rosettes and we can manually place rosettes and constrain them by elevation and then set up different azimuths um, with their own face angle, berm width and catch berm distances. We've also got a nice um, diagram which demonstrates this so as we add new face angles to the rosette, the diagram will automatically update. We could use the planning model. So if we've got a, a rock code or a geotech zone set up in our model, we can browse for the correct attribute and then define the relevant face angles for that attribute. And finally, we can also use boundary strings. In this case, I've got a string called regions with an ID called geotech. And if I just show you that, four regions against my topography. 
And in that case, each of the four regions has got their own face angle, berm width, and catch berm. We also have control over bench by bench. So for example, I can say every four benches, I want one catch berm. And in addition, whatever I write in this area will overwrite any of the slope angles that I have um, added in the previous tab. So at the top of the pit in the oxide zone, the face angle may be a lot shallower. So I just type 40 and that will overwrite. Okay, so saving that task, the next is the shell contours. And I'm going to generate a contour from my model. So it's going to take the bottom phase blocks and create a wireframe and I have the option to smooth the wireframe there. If you've got a wireframe from something like MPV Scheduler, you can import the wireframe here and we can generate contours from it in the same way. So the first part is creating the wireframe, the second part is creating the contours. So I'm going to generate contours by bench and there you can see that's now complete. We also have an option for a ramp layout tool. Now this is a useful tool for looking at uh, different scenarios of where a road may daylight, where you may need to add uh, uh, switchbacks. So I give my road a name, I give it a gradient, um, nine degrees and width of 14 meters. And then I choose a start point and it will it will go up the pit at a constant gradient until it gets to the edge of the pit. So I have now an option to move this road around. And if I wanted my road to daylight in this side of the pit, I can add some switchbacks. And if I'm happy with the position of the road, I can just save my task and go into the auto design. So the next task is the auto design where we can dynamically create our toe and crest strings. The layout of the task is at the top, we have our road definition and at the bottom, we have some rules to be able to constrain our toe and crest strings. Now, the first thing we need to do is create a constraint string. And I'm going to use the base, but the base contour is not a close, it's not a connected string. So I'm just going to use the design commands to connect the strings together, connect and close. And then I'm going to add the selected string as a constraint. So now I turn off the contours and I can see I have one constraint string. So now I just click on the recalculate button and what it's going to do is it's going to create the um, entire open pit based on the slope regions that we have set up and the road definition that we have set up. Now at this stage, I might decide that I don't like my road, so I can just click on delete Alternatively, I can add a brand new road and give it a slightly different gradient and give it a slightly different width and choose my start point. And if I right click uh, the base string, it will add the road all the way around to it gets to the edge of the pit. I've got options to changing the end elevation so I can move the end elevation and if I right click on a toe and crest string, it will stop the string, uh, the road string at that point. I can also move the, move the start of the road. I right click in a different portion of the base string and it will move my road string around. I can also at this stage add switchbacks. I click on the add switchback button and I just click on the portion of the road and that I went where I want the switch back and it will be added. And again, if I want to make the end of the road the edge of the pit, I move the end elevation, I right click at the edge of the pit and it will carry on right to the edge. 
Now, in this case, I only have one um, one pit constraint, which is this string at the bottom. But based on my contours, you can see that uh, e each bench is not necessarily even. So I'm going to add some more constraints. Now, constraint strings need to be closed strings. So I'm just going to grab a couple of extra strings from the contours, type CLO to close both those strings, and then add the selected strings as pit constraints. Now, if I turn off the shell contours, you can see I've got three constraint strings set up. So again, to recalculate my pit based on these new constraints, click on the recalculate button, and you can see that it has pushed my um, pushed those benches out to, to honor those constraints. At this stage, I can also do things like make a design surface. I can combine the design surface with the topography add a pit rim to the strings when they're above the topography. Click on the recalculate button. And you can actually see that most of the strings that have been generated are above the topography. And if I make the design surface, it creates this uh, purple string which shows the actual edge of the pit. If you're happy with that, you can save. And we can then go on to designing phase two. But to design phase two, I would need to go and create some more contours, um, optionally do the ramp layout, and then design from scratch. But anyway, we have more detailed uh, demonstration videos on YouTube about how to create pits using the dynamic design tools. So I'm going to carry on with the what's new. Okay, as you may have seen me using, we've added a pit data control bar. And the pit data control bar it's the hub for controlling the viewing of all of the data that we have added in our project setup. So, for example, I can see my topography, my planning model, dependencies, sequences, all for individual phases. I can view phase DTM, strings, um, bench solids, constraints, contours, you name it. But it's a very useful way of managing the view of all of your data without needing to load things from the project files and managing from the sheets. Just by clicking the radio buttons turns on the display of these data. The next new function of Studio OP is the auto scheduler. Now the scheduling options in Studio OP are broad. We can define scheduling periods and schedule mining, drilling and blasting activities specify a loader mining sequence, valid, validate against equipment, plant capacities and production constraints. We can do dump and stockpile modeling. And we can also do scenario-based schedule optimization with our desktop-based CPLEX scheduler. And this is the new auto scheduler in Studio OP. Just going to show you how that will work. So I have a project here where the um, reserves and the schedule has been set up. So I've set up my calendars, my destinations, I've set up my haul trucks and my haul routes as you can see here. The previous implementation limited the schedule optimizer to Summit, which is our cloud-based platform, but we have now added the CPLEX algorithm to the local machine, which means that we can run different scenarios on our desktop instead of sending them to the cloud. To add a new scenario, you make some changes to your schedule and click on new, give it a name, change the periods that you want, and then click on start. And that will run that optimization. But I'm going to just delete this one and take a look at two previous ones that have been done. So five trucks and eight trucks. And if I look at five trucks, I can click on use and I can run an animation of that schedule. And the default animation colors are percentage mined. So we can see by each period, the bench is being depleted and the stockpiles growing and the waste dump growing. If I go back to the auto scheduler, I can view the eight truck schedule. If I click on the view button, that actually opens Windows Explorer and it creates the optimizer has created several files which give me information about the schedule that it's produced. So first of all, the schedule as a whole, 
the period which is being mined, the tons that are being mined by period, the loaders that have been used, truck hours, cycle time, and that is for all of the 10 periods, the 12 periods that have been set up. Also things like truck usage, truck hours. But if I have another uh, schedule that has been completed, I can use this schedule and then quickly run an animation to see what changes have been made to the mining sequence. Okay, another new feature that we have is the option to calculate cut and fill volumes. It's a brand new function which calculates volumes between two surfaces. It includes the option to report by bench, evaluate against the block model, and also constrain the reporting using blast polygons. In a quick demonstration of this, it can be found in the surface ribbon cut and fill volumes. So in this example, I've got two surfaces, July in red, and then August in green, and then my res mod, which is the block model covering this area. So if I go to surfaces, cut and fill volumes, the dialog allows me to input my earlier surface and then my later surface. Optionally, I can use outline strings, such as a blast area. I can evaluate over benches, and I'm going to set these up manually. My Initial crest elevation is 365 and our bench height is 10 meters and I've got about 10 benches. I'm also going to use a model to evaluate against. I'm going to select my resource model, give it a default density, and then evaluate using a legend based on the gold field that we've got set up. So we're going to specify waste, low grade, and high grade. Then I click on calculate. And then that produces the results of the cut volume, the fill volume, and the total cut and total fill area. So we've got several sets of results. Firstly, a summary file, which I'll view in the table editor. And this basically tells me the cut volume by bench. Also have the evaluation results by bench. So if I just click cancel and then turn off the display of the model and the wireframe surface, you can see I've got my cut and fill solid that's been calculated. I can change to view based on toe. And we can see the volumes associated with each bench area. Okay, so that just about wraps up this webinar. Just a quick reminder that if you want to see any more videos on how to create open pits using the new dynamic design tools, just log on to YouTube, type Datamine Studio OP, and on the Datamine software channel, we have Studio OP playlist with three webinars that have been set up um, by our colleagues in the South African office. So now I'm going to hand you over to Lee Poulin in our Brisbane office, and he's going to answer any questions that you may have about Studio OP and some of the new features. But uh, from me, thank you very much for your time. Much appreciated and look forward to meeting you very